does it even matter that you fiddle around with legal stuff before you're worrying about outsourcing your business? Why should we even discuss this? So, I mean, it certainly depends on who your target audience is. So we're, we've been through, yeah, I've been in the world of exits and then I'm in mergers and acquisitions for pretty much my whole life. The part that's interesting is that the last six years, I sort of started this e-commerce law practice. I, you know, I left the big corporate world and just kind of been following the trends of what e-commerce businesses need help with. And obviously in the last few years, exits has been a big part of what we do. And we're, in 2021, we did a quarter billion and in, in for our clients, I think we're now vastly approaching like towards a half a billion in close and cash received for our clients. So, I mean, we do know a thing or two about the industry. And I will say one of the first things I noticed with Amazon deals in particular was the sort of the lack of due diligence. Like it was just really kind of like a lack of interest in doing the due diligence by the buyers. The buyers had, were in a rush to get deals closed. They were in a rush to sort of spend the money that they had committed to them. And the last thing they really wanted to do was get bogged down in due diligence. So what, what do they do? Well, instead what they would do was they would say, we want you to make a promise in the contract that everything's good. Right. And unknowingly you might want to do that. You might just sign a contract thinking it's just like any other boilerplate doc, which is not without realizing that you're actually making a pretty unreasonable promise. You're making these promises that you you haven't really researched, right? And so going to your point about IP, it's like, so you have a trademark. You've, you've, got, you've had this one trademark that you trademarked, you, you, fought, you registered the trademark, it's registered with Amazon. And that, because that controls your brand registry, you kind of think you're done. But if you created a brand of sort of, that sort of dynamic, right? It's not just one product, right? But let's say you have different variations and maybe the variations have different names for their, for their different flavors or smell, or whatever it is or styles, like each of those becomes a trademark in the common law. You're, you're holding them out as trademarks, right? Certain slogans that you might be using. You could be establishing trademark rights in those things. And it wouldn't be inappropriate for a buyer to interpret that as trademark. And the fact that you haven't registered it means that you're sort of taking on the risk that if, if it turns out that you shouldn't have been using that name for your variation, because it kind of causes confusion with another brand. Uh, now you're taking the risk. Whereas when you have a registered trademark, the risk is a lot lower because while well, yes, it can be subject to challenge depending on how many years and, and whatnot, but there's a higher probability that your trademark is good if it's been through the vetting process of the U S trademark office. So from our perspective, is it necessary? I mean, plenty of deals have closed without having that extra leg light look into your IP, but we think it's certainly for your own protection better that you do start applying to those trademarks now, because simply you don't want to invest in building a brand that eventually you can't own, right? That you can't own or sell. I mean, it's just, it's just a waste of your time and money and it puts you at risk. So why why would you want to do that? I mean, wouldn't you want to know that these brands are valid? 